Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at the web server on the 2 million box from Hack the Box. It's a PHP web server on a box that Hack the Box put out to celebrate hitting 2 million members. Um, it is a PHP web server that looks a lot like the original Hack the Box website. Um, and so we're just going to dive in, take a look at the PHP source, and uh, see where the vulnerabilities we exploited are, and uh, we'll fix one of them, and uh, just get a feel for how this PHP server works. Uh, if you haven't solved the P the 2 million box, um, you should go try it. It's up there on Hack the Box right now. You can go play it. Um, you know, if, I'll have a link to my write-up in the notes here. You can definitely check that out as well. And uh, yeah, with that, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so we're starting in var www.html, the standard directory. Um, we could go look at how that's configured in like the nginx configs, but we're going to start right here. Um, we've got a PHP application. Now, a lot of times we think about PHP applications as literally folders and files with PHP files in them. Um, but this one's set up when you get to more complicated frameworks, or this is kind of a dummy PHP app that looks like one of those frameworks. We're going to see something more like what we see here in index.php. And what that is, is, uh, let's see. So we got at the top here, we've got some setup code, a session stuff, uh, reading and environment variables, um, connecting to the database. And then we've got these routes defined and what we can see here is all the different routes that support the application. And that's both the uh, pages themselves. So, you know, if you go to this, the web route, you're going to get home controller uh, with the index function. And if you go to invite, you're going to get into the home controller and the invite function. And so what happens is you have these different controllers um, and those are just PHP files and each one, or well, they're PHP classes. And each one of those has functions like index, invite, uh, get register, etc. And so, what this does, these routes are going to map a get request to here to this class and this function. And so we can see, again, the pages, but also um, the 404 stuff and then all the API stuff as well. Um, and then when there's a match, you know, it calls that function. Um, so if we step out of here, we can look at like the, the home controller, for example. And this, this one's going to be pretty simple, I suspect. Um, in here, Basically, you have all these functions that we saw get called, and all they do is they call view of a certain index, uh, or view of, sorry, view of a certain page. So index or invite or home. Um, and in fact, we can look at, uh, let's see, if we do view, uh, or vim view, uh, what was it like? Uh, let's do the invite code. Look at that anyway. And this is literally just the page that manages the invite code. And there's a little bit of PHP up here at the top, but for the most part, this is just, you know, the page itself. Um, there's some J JavaScript down here at the bottom that handles the verification. Um, so that, that's a pretty simple one, right? The view, the view, the controller function calls the view and we're done. Um, let's look at instead, we'll look at like the invite controller. And what do we have here? Let's see, go to the top. Um, we've got different functions here. So we have a function that's generate code, a function called how to generate. Um, function called generate, a function called verify. Um, now, if I, we could have taken notes and known exactly which of these functions is tied to the different uh, invite API endpoints, but we can figure out pretty quickly. So verify, for example, right? Well, it's gonna get the code out of a post request. Um, it's gotta have application.json or it's gonna complain, you know, these kinds of things that we've seen. Um, generate looks like the same, uh, generate does not look like, this looks more like a function that gets called, let's see. Um, here, generate code is uh, definitely going to, this is where it's going to generate a random number and it's going to build it and it actually inserts it into the database. So that's how we can see now, we start to see like, okay, so when I generate a code, um, we're going to put that code into the invite codes table. Um, it doesn't even store my user ID or anything. So it's literally just putting codes in the table. So if anyone creates a code and then I get that code, I can use it. Uh, okay. Uh, there's the how to generate function here. This is clearly what gets called when, you know, we get back our challenge, our first step in the challenge with the ROT13. Um, if you haven't done this box, uh, it's worth, you know, I'll put a link in the uh, description below to my blog post showing the solution. Um, but this is the original hack the box invite challenge that existed up until I think 2021. Um, so. And uh, yeah, so we have all these different invite functions. This is kind of cool. Um, we can also take a look at, we do uh, vim, controllers, admin controllers. Let's take a look at this one. Um, this is where the vulnerability or one of the vulnerabilities shows up. Um, and specifically, we'll take a look at update settings. And this is one where 
Uh, it was an admin API, but I was able to access it as a non-admin. In fact, I was able to access it and use it to make myself an admin and get access to other admin APIs. So let's, let's look at how this works. Um, interestingly, it's, you know, props to the author of this box. Uh, it looks like the developer of this box intended to make sure you were an admin before you could use this API. In fact, so we, first thing we do is we call is admin from the is admin function. And uh, if it's not true, then we return an auth unauthorized. So why did I not get that? Um, if we look here, there, there, are two, there are two endpoints that, uh, well, there are three endpoints in the admin thing, but only two of them are defined in this controller. Um, and the first one is this is admin. And but we, we did call, I did call this while solving the box and I got back a false. Um, but what it actually returns, if we remember correctly, is, let's see, we do a query, and then if I am admin, we return JSON and code message equals true. And if I'm not, we do message equals false. Well, we come down here and we're not checking is admin message. We're checking is admin itself. And so basically this always is going to exist because it's a dictionary and we're getting this, this or uh, yeah, I guess it's a dictionary in PHP. Um, and we're getting a dictionary and the dictionary exists. Um, and so that's the mistake that uh, the developer made here and allowed this through. And so because of that, I can come through here and um, now you can start to see you know, you have to have your content type set, you have to have a parameter email, you have to have a parameter is admin, and if all of that works, uh, we are going to, ah, the is admin has to be either a zero or a one, uh, and if all that works, we're going to get the user out of the database, we're going to update the user, and uh, assuming it exists, and uh, that's the end of that. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, we, we now can see one bug in the code. We can even fix this, I think. Let's, we can try this real quick. Um, I didn't, plan on doing this, but we can come back here and say, uh, is admin, I believe it was called, um, auth. Is that the, uh, let's see, we gotta do it. It's better to do a git request here. We don't need this body, but yeah. So, um, let's see. Oh, I'm not, I'm not even logged in. Let's see. We'd have to solve the whole invite code. I guess we'll, um, I'm going to pause the video here and just get logged in real sec, real quick. All right, so I'm back here. I've got an account now. I'm logged in, um, and uh, I can let's see. We can check here if we can go to admin um, auth, and we can see that I am. Oops, not put. We want to do a git, and we can see that I am not an admin. I've just got a new account, um, and we can come over here to the um, settings update. Oh, let's do this in a new window. Let's do that. Send a repeater this back perfect let's not put uh back again nope okay all right so we've got our we've got our window here it turns false we come over here we can do setting update we can do put and we see that we get uh invalid content type so it's working now if we come down here and we say how would we fix this let's see is admin is returning this json stuff i wonder if we can just access message try that Save and now we send and it crashes. I suspect this JSON encode is not actually sending back a dictionary, but in fact, it's taking this dictionary and turning it into a string. Um, and so, really, what we'd want to do here is have this return. We don't want to have a different endpoint that calls this admin, and one of the endpoint being connect. You know, there maybe maybe there's a function that returns true or false, and then this is this this route would would encode that response and send it, and this one would use it. Um, but for now, if we want to just be kind of Keep about, uh, keep about it, do a quick change. What we can do is we can say like, um, let's do like string string. And this will say in that is admin string, is there the string uh, false? Because if the string false is in there, that means we're not admin and we want to stop. So if we save that and now we try to access this, we get our 401 off unauthorized. Um, and so now we aren't able to access it. Um, so we fix that bug. Uh, I'm going to undo that because to show the next bug, I'm probably going to need to uh, make myself admin. Um, anyway, that was kind of a divergence, but you know, that's, that was the bug we had here. Um, the other bug that we wanted to take a look at was in the VPN creation itself. Um, and that is going to be, let's see here. Uh, if we do Vim controllers, I believe it was in VPN controller. And so there's a handful of functions in here. Let's see. So we have this, remove special characters, which is just a private function. And we have download VPN, which is a private function, meaning those aren't accessed from the outside. 
Um, then we have the generate user VPN, uh, regenerate user VPN. I think believe those are the two endpoints that are hit when you click on the access page. And then we have admin VPN here. Um, and uh, the error is going to be, yeah, let's, let's work through the, I guess we worked through the logic here of how this works. Um, we want to come down here. We're going to do a bunch of checking. So this is all the checking to make sure that our request is correct. Um, and then we're going to regenerate user VPN using the username. And then we're going to, here's, this is the injection right here, uh, user bin cat, uh, this username, the file.vpn. And so we could um, say like, oh, how, you know, why, why are we not in, in all the other places? Let's see up here. Like when we do a generate user VPN or regenerate user VPN, uh, we are going to remove special characters from the username first. And that is going to make this exact call completely safe. And that's why we can't hit it from the, um, the regular endpoints. And so this would prevent us from like, let's say we were able to register the username semicolon ID sign or hash you know comment um if it not for if not for this line then when then when i use the normal api i would get back the command injection and i could actually this is kind of a second order sql injection um because i store myself in the database well i guess it's second order command injection we store it in the database and then when it's retrieved it does the injection so that's kind of cool um, but this this prevents that um but we did not make that call right here on the shell exec and so that's where we get the command injection um I think that's going to be it for today. Um, this is just sort of a walkthrough of the PHP web server and how, where the vulnerabilities are and uh, how to fix them. Hopefully this was useful for you. Thanks for staying around till the end and I will talk to you next time. Oh.